Hi, Scott. Hi, Venetia. How are you? I'm good. Now, do you mean how are you? How are you? Or just how are you? How are you? <laughs> how are things going? What's good? How are things with everything that between us yeah, is going? This is my life because I think we we take this statement so lightly. And I was just reading about this um, somewhere that, you know, how's life today? How are you? Can mean so much. Um, can mean the world to someone who probably just needs to hear those words sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, and it could be life changing. And that is these little things, these little anecdotes that are just things we take for granted. They're so important. Um, and we never really pay attention to that. But we're going to talk about all of that first. <laughs> Let's get you introduced. Um, meet Scott Terry, everyone. He is a beautiful musician behind Between Mountains. And I don't mean just his face. Yes, that's beautiful. But so is his music, which you'll come to know. And, um, and I hope you saw his video um, over the weekend. And this is him. This is the man behind that video. And, and, and we're going to talk about his experience with suicide today and unfortunately when we first connected he told me that he had lost not one two but three of his best friends to suicide and i think that drew him a little closer to the project um and definitely got my heart uh the first time i spoke to him so so scott um this is such a big deal right and it's just such a big, big thing that we just, this elephant in the room that nobody likes to talk about, you know, mental health, mental illness, it could be anything. It could be, you know, suicidal thoughts, it could be anxiety, it could be depression, but we just don't talk about it enough. Um, thank you today for taking out the time and talking about it to us. Thank you for, you know, going back and reliving your experience, what you're going to share with us today. And I'm sure it's going to be invaluable to someone and someone out there will relate. So please um, tell me what had happened with your friends. <laughs> well, uh, to, to start off and go back a little bit. Um, yeah, it, it's uh, it's definitely a subject that is not necessarily spoken about often uh, within the context of uh, our groups, our social milieus, our friends or anything like that. Um, I was actually just saying to my friend downstairs, like, hey, I'm doing another interview on this. And he's like, what is it about? Well, it's about In Between Mountains, it's the film, but it's also more importantly about uh, mental health and uh, and suicide. And he's like, oh, well, that's weird. <laughs> and it, it happens so almost autonomously. Yeah, no, like, oh, that's, that's a strange thing to talk about. Why would you talk about that? Well, it's uh, it's something that I think is really important to uh, vocalize outwardly simply for the fact that uh, awareness of it uh, can can help somebody in a particular moment way shape or form or time to relate and realize that they're not the only one thinking about something in that regard it's mm -hmm. it's almost a, a normal part of the human condition and that it's not necessarily wrong but there is something they could actually do about it too oh most certainly and i you know um had another interview which is going to air now next Monday and um, she was telling me about how you know it's you know intervention is everything and we just don't intervene enough and I feel like people think oh wait that's my private space that's what I hear from my little kids now this is my private space and this is this and you know I feel like these barriers that we create and this society creates for us and what we learn um, this physical space thing. I mean, it's like, you know, get over it. Um, everyone has their own way to reach out to someone. Um, and if, you know, they're vulnerable, they're called sensitive, which is again, looked down upon. Um, all these things, vulnerability, sensitivity. I mean, if you are, then you are, that's your, that's your make, you know, those are your genes, that's your personality. Um, why should these things, you know, you know, inhibit us from expressing ourselves um, and, and someone else looking down upon you because you are these things. I mean, 
intervention is key, right? You've got to intervene a little bit more. You know, I understand the physical space, but, you know, sometimes you've got to reach out. Sometimes you have to do a little bit more than just, you know, ask how are you, right? You have to go beyond. Well, it's um, it's it's funny that you mentioned that and you said something along the lines. It was like, how are you doing today? And how that statement kind of fits into a daily uh, talk and banter back and forth um, can't answer for anybody that's ever actually been through those kind of thoughts or processes but it's it's definitely more complex than, than any than anybody who hasn't had those experiences can imagine yeah. um, and everybody is unique in their own experience in that regard as well uh, the the strangest thing to really think about and this is this is only in my personal experience as well I'm sure that it is uh, uh, prevalent a lot more than we like to admit or that we do admit is yeah. that nearly nearly I can't even say a percentage a really really big portion of my friends and family have at some point or another turned around and talked to me about their own experiences with either thoughts or or, or actions at some point or you know uh, so whether whether it's an intervention by somebody else noticing something and asking and prodding um that that's another thing but it's another thing to also recognize that hey if you're that individual and you're having these thoughts that it's okay to talk about them and yeah people might think that they're strange but really you know there there's a, there's an opportunity to to relate as well it's a lot more prevalent and a lot more um common than a lot than, than we, we talk about or like to admit oh, sure. something that everybody can actually relate with because it isn't as it part of the condition that we live in <laughs> it's sad but you know i feel like you, you just i mean it's as important if not more than your you know physical being physical well-being if you know you have a mental well-being you need to look after yourself because if that's not good that's not fit up here then you know you really can't do anything and that's you know people don't get that and you know um the other lady was also telling me nina about how stigma is attached to suicide and that is so true because it's like it's taboo almost it's like why would you want to ask me how i'm doing in that respect it's like you know again there's a barrier there's there's a shyness there's you know you don't want to talk about how you're really feeling mm -hmm. and that's just so sad but um you know let's let's i'm happy you reached out so i want to talk uh to you about the first things that you told me when you first joined the movie and about you know how you lost your friends and we would like to hear that story today sure um so yes just to be very very clear of course I, i've had my own uh experiences with um with thoughts of self-harm depreciation uh suicide and, and everything like above as we just talked about i think that's a lot more prevalent than people like to admit and i want to just come out and say that hey there's a stigma against it but there's also a growing force that says hey you're strong for actually being able to speak out about these things yes. uh, so it, with that said um the the reason why i felt so strongly pulled to this project of between mountains and what you were describing as the storyline of this main character and the arc of this character developing from somebody who has lost somebody very close from a family member the son daughter anybody that's that close and then in turn starts to get the ideation that maybe this is something that might be a way to escape this pain or feeling this mental turmoil as well and come come to find out over the evolution that um things might just work out okay and giving it a chance might you know you know you, you never know what's going to build off of that in general um it was in, in, incredibly important to me because of the fact that i had lost uh, so many of my own interpersonal relationships with my friends two things um but in particular, the most impactful have been the suicides. Mm. Um, you know, I don't know the statistic for it, but there's that age between um, 18 and 30 some odd for especially males that that tend to target a lot more um, of these actions than than in, than most other. Yeah, group or, I heard. Uh, yeah. I saw, and I said, well, I don't know. I mean. What could be going on? But then, but then again, you know, it's the same thing. I mean, it's not. It's we have. We are living in this life, right? We are gonna face struggles. There's gonna be hardships, at no matter what age. Mm -hmm. So 
um, you know, when you're a teenager, there's peer pressure and all of that. And then there's, you know, pressure for career. And then there's, you know, pressure from parents, there's pressure from society, there's pressure everywhere. Um, pressure at work when you have the work, pressure to stay at the top when you're at the top. I mean, it's, it's everywhere. It's just maintaining um, your own, um, you know, your own ground and standing tall and saying, well, look, this is fine. This is outside of me. This is external. Um, I am not this. This is not me. You know, and you have to start separating, I think, um, some of that because not everything is really real, right? It's, it's, we got to go through certain, you know, emotions and we just got to go through these things, but they're, you don't have to take them to heart. You don't have to say, well, this is, you know, this is me and I'm, you know, and I'm, this is how it's going to be and I'm in this bubble. And, you know, that's when we need that intervention. We need someone to come in and look at us and see that and say, well, I think I saw something. I think I saw a change in, in behavior. I think I saw you doing something different today. You don't usually do this. You know, just those signs. And I think if we start listening more, if we're more in tune with, you know, ourselves, we'll be more in tune with others as well, you know, our spiritual selves. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so going back to the question or uh, what would you want me to talk about? My my own friend's experiences. Um, so yes, I, I had three of my uh, best friends growing up uh, throughout middle school and high school, who had um, cut their life short uh, by their own volition. Um, my the, the first one, uh, man, how how do I go about saying it? Something like this mm -hmm. uh, was. At a time, like all, all these times were, were, of course, outside of anything that I could do about it because I was kind of outside of that community here and there. I know that when we had our previous talk before on the, on the Zoom appointment, it was a little bit more poignant on being able to describe the, the conditions and setting up for it. Um, but, yeah. I, and so they have these, these, these suicides. They happen one after the other, and you think one got, I don't know, uh, one got off on the other, just the thought, and kind of got motivated to. No, not not at all. Um, yeah, I'm honestly, um, listening into this interview right now, like our last interview, I think was a little bit better um, with being able to set everything up, and we had much more fluid dynamic and being able to talk about these things. Mm -hmm. um, with, with this go around, um, it's it's kind of hard being pushed right into that spot of talking about these things, especially since they were my own experiences. Yeah. So uh, with, with that said, there's nothing that that I could say about anybody's inter actions or what had motivated what to do these things. Everybody tries to rationalize why somebody has done some sort of action for an otherwise, or otherwise the news wouldn't be nearly as interesting. We try to speculate on why somebody would want to do something and what motivates them to do it. The, the, the key figure that I could think of for anything that, that has to do with mental health is that it's a very, very internal process. And while external uh, stimuli might have some sort of factor in influencing these things, it's the inner self dialogue that has a lot more to do with how we interact with our external world that enables us to be able to do something so drastic as being able to commit suicide. Um, that's not to say that there is any one definitive cause or reason to, but you know, there is, there is data that goes behind this idea that, um, that when people have a certain self talk and, self-talk turns into a belief and a belief turns into a faith, whether that faith is in an external process and being able to have an idea that something else is greater happening or faith that something's going to happen to you. It's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, if, if you want to take your own life, you're going to do it. <laughs> if, um, but the, the caveat there is that there the justifications don't make up for the means a lot of the time. You know, there are those external stressors, the the lack of income, the lack of attention, the lack of this, the lack of that, or too much of one thing or another as well. Um, but, it, but it's all that internal process that we have with ourselves that justifies whether the action is, is conducive to the way that we want our world to happen. Uh, do, do I, you know, is, it, is this something that I want my, 
friends to be burdened with will know, okay, is this something that I want my family to burden with? Okay, well, how do I get rid of this option? Well, I think I can only must find like one thing. That's one of literally a billion different dialogues that somebody could have with themselves. <laughs> um, so with that, um, the, 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 the thing that we deal with as survivors, I think more than anything else is the, uh, is the fallout of, of justifying or giving reason to why somebody had done that in the first place. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's going to be something that we see in the character arc of, of the main character for Between Mountains, mm -hmm. um, where there's this thing where there's this huge gap left for questioning, well, why did this somebody do this? Why did this person do this? Uh, when I've given them everything, when I've given them every single opportunity, I've given them every single chance, um, despite what they're thinking, I was paying attention to them, I was doing this. Um, and I feel like uh, the fallout of that, trying to justify and create a reason is, is, is what causes a lot of the pain and heartache for the people that are left, you know, the survivor guilt more like more so than often not to, you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. But in, in our case, I would think, um, in between mountains is more like um you know the, this man who loses his child suddenly and now he you know he's just suffering and he's in that you know dark hole and he's in that tunnel and he sees no light and so how does he come over it how do you actually get over the death of your own child mm -hmm. do you ever get over it i'm a parent i i don't think that i don't think there's anything more grave of a loss in this world than losing your child. Okay, let's just delve right into um, what had happened. Um, and uh, you said they were in their 20s, in their early 20s. So yes, if, if you recall the last time that we were talking, um, uh, we, we had gone through a little bit of what we're going to go through now in terms of where and what happened and set up the whole social connotation where we're at. Um, so throughout middle school and high school, I I'd, I'd formed this uh, clique of friends. And this clique of friends had, uh, um, you know, we'd held expectations for ourselves in certain ways that we saw fit and, you know, uh, lower, middle, upper class, upper, upper middle class. Um, going to school and, and setting our expectations for ourselves in the way that we thought best or what we might be able to accomplish in our world. And, um, you know, we spent a lot of time partying and not really letting, you know, things get in our way or uh, worries kind of take over who we were. Um, but there's some points where we just grow up and we experience some things um, where, you know, one thing leads to another and we feel like we need to do something drastic about it. Uh, for me, one of those experiences came to where I was actually caught in high school with a little bit of marijuana. <laughs> and at the time, my brother was already a year into the military. I came from a military family. Both my uh, my father and then both my grandfathers were both in the military. And even further than that, their fathers before them, in one shape, way, or form, were part of the military. So I was like, well, okay, I have this opportunity to kind of get out of where I'm at. You know, I wasn't... The, I was a smart kid, not the best performing in high school because I was bored most of the time and spent my time partying. But maybe this is a good opportunity to kind of set myself and prove to myself that I could do something. But when I, once I did that, I kind of left my entire friend group um, back home with their own devices and they kept on doing the same thing. Um, come to find in my third year, I get this call in the middle of my third year um, as I was about to come back to the United States, uh, that my one of my best friends uh, had had it, it was first thought that it was an accident. Had actually accidentally shot himself. Um, it's been ruled the other way around, but uh, you know the whole story behind that and the connotation is something that I can't begin to even describe because I wasn't even there. Uh, but for one some one reason or another, I, there was this uh, this outcry for. Uh, the need and want and love of somebody else to be there and without that there would you know not be them anymore <laughs> um for he um shot himself 
Is that what it was? It, it ended up not being an accidental thing. You know, the witnesses that were there um, had actually countered against that. But there's a certain level of denial that happens as we try to justify why people do the things they do. Right. Um, and uh, the, my, my second friend um, who had uh, gone was actually a very upstanding individual. He spent his time teaching kids um, and he was uh, on his way to becoming a really good high school teacher himself and um, very involved with a lot of our friend group and stuff in football. And it came quite suddenly that, you know, one day he just didn't show up, <laughs> wasn't there at all. and. Um, and he was discovered in his own house, you know, hung up, strung up by, him, by his own volition as well. Mm-hmm. And then um, my my third friend, who was a few years after that, um, there was, uh, as far as I can tell, it, it's something that I had kind of become desensitized to. So I didn't, I hadn't so much been in contact with that friend group, especially since after the second time, I kind of wanted to escape as far away from that kind of mentality as possible. So I kind of dropped that whole friend group. Uh, But I did get the news that my other um, really, really good friend from from growing up had had also been killed. And um, in in a way not too dissimilar from my first friend. And uh, it was- Was a gun involved in that too? As far as I'm concerned, it was more more like, um, I, I don't know the whole story behind that. I chose not to pay attention to it. I didn't really want to know. Uh, but he did. Uh, he, he was in an argument with his um, girlfriend at the time. And uh, you know, one thing led to another. There was a there was a passionate argument. And uh, that's the way that things went down. Um, which. In front of the girlfriend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's these. uh these things that we try to come up with in our head to kind of make sense of why our friends would do something like this, or friends or family. Um, the biggest thing I could think of, or the, the most concise thing I could think of, especially after spending so many years studying why people do the things they do, and a lot of these are the reasons why I went into psychology and applied behavior analysis and uh, behavioral neuroscience after that fact, uh, was just to try to figure out why people do the things they do. Why, do. why am I doing these things? Why am I making these choices that I am? And a lot of the time, these... Uh, these Because you wanted to understand this. You wanted to exactly, understand yeah, this. yeah. But these, these, these actions are almost instantaneous ideations of going, oh, you know what? Well, this is going to do something. This is going to get a reaction. This is going to get a rise. This is, get, this is somehow going to get what I want as a message out there to this person or these things that I'm trying to communicate with. And it's uh, definitely a big, uh, big communication, but it's definitely something that's often misconstrued and yeah. taboo, like you had said. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, and then going from there, um, and just to even go back, um, what was the commonality? Because they all knew each other, these three friends of yours. Um, like, what was the common thread? Was like, one, I'm trying to understand um, if they're all friends and how if maybe one, you know, triggered a thought, um, you know, or pun intended actually, um, and then it kind of bounced off to the other. Like, I'm just trying to understand does this thing kind of bounce off to what? another? That this is this is what I mean. You 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 trying to understand this this concept is like what I was trying to understand as well. And the most I've come up with is something that is still very much outside the narrative of their own justifications. Like yeah. we, no matter what, we're going to try to make sense of somebody somebody else's actions, but that's not going to be their experience. So yeah, I, no, I would have I, I would have, I would have no idea whether one motivated the next or inspired somebody else to do something else. Yeah. Uh, but if there were common threads, I, I don't know if that would lead to any sort of causation or if it's just a correlation. Yeah. Um, the correlations that were there is that we were friends. We listened to the same music. We did the same things. We parted the same way, drank the same booze, did the same drugs, um, um, did the did similar things over and over again. We're in the same places all the time. Uh, you know, I honestly don't know if I can answer that. It's something that is uh, very unique to everybody's internal monologue or internal dialogue and how they, you know, make that instantaneous action for them to do something in general. 
But you know, according to the World Health Organization, every 40 seconds, someone commits a suicide. And that is an astounding statistic to me. I had never known until I started researching when I you know, started doing this movie and just so randomly. And you know, when I get involved in something that I really go and research, and I dig underneath, and this is why I started these interviews, because I was just curious that, you know, maybe there are others like my character, um, like Johnny Morris, who are also suffering the way he is. And maybe they just need, you know, to be reached out to, maybe they just need to be talked to, you mm-hmm. know, and which they don't have. And, you know, my character in the movie doesn't have that a moral support. And, you know, he lost his wife already, now he loses his son. So where is that support? He's not getting anything. Um, And, you know, just that, you know, I just feel like, you know, the perspective of time is so different when you think about statistics like this, where every 40 seconds, someone is lost to suicide. I mean, I think of time so differently now. Like, what do I do in in 40 seconds? I don't do anything in 40 seconds, you know? it's But there's a death happening every 40 seconds. A death that could be prevented. And that's um, that's the sad part. So, yeah, it made me think of time very differently, the perspective on time. What do you think? Um, I think that with the perspective of time comes also the perspective of opportun- opportunity. Mm-hmm. It is something that it's just as instantaneous as taking that thought, being like, hey, I'm going to jump off this bridge to following that other line of thought going like, hey, maybe I can go out into the woods and just meditate on something for a little while. Uh, Taking that inspiration to a different direction um, and just listening to that inner voice in the other direction might be, it might be as simple as that. We need to be open more, we need to express more. This is what it is. We don't do it enough and that's why we land up in these holes and these you know, we keep this tunnel vision that, you know, we, we're, we're in this and we're never going to get out of it. But you are because after night comes day and after day comes night and life is a cycle. It, it, it's going to change no matter what. You know, they say, um, you know, this too shall pass because it will. Time is never still. Things change. Situations change. Circumstances change. And so you'll come out of it. But yes, the first step you can do is talk to someone. You don't have to suffer alone. You're not alone. There's probably others that are going through the same thing that you are, especially in this pandemic, right? I mean, look at the effects of the pandemic on us today. Um, we're probably fortunate, but there's so many that are they're not so fortunate today. And, um, you know, they, they can't even express themselves. They've lost their jobs. Um, you know, it, and then on top of that, the pandemic doesn't make anything easy. So in this time, you know, what do you think we should do? Well, with that, I can answer it with an example. Um, honestly, I wouldn't be out here in Nashville. I wouldn't have taken the necessary steps to get motivated, uh, start packing up my stuff, and then drive across the country, literally, to find myself landed in a completely different city that I have nobody um, and nobody in, or I, I've been making friends that I had nobody to talk to or nobody to to meet up with or anything like that. If I didn't have the opportunity to go and talk with a professional counselor, a, a therapist, mm-hmm. just to, you know, kind of set my mind at ease and my order, my own internal dialogue telling me that I couldn't do this, that I couldn't do that, or I should do this and do that instead. When I had this dream, this um, underlying current of who I am begging to come out being like, Hey, I want you to be this musician. I want you to be this actor. I want you to be this, you know, executive producer. I want you to be this, and I want this. But you're not getting it here. How do you make the moves to get out of here? I wouldn't. I wouldn't have been able to make the decisions to come out here if I didn't have that person to help guide me along, to open up that conversation away from self doubt and away from self uh, depreciation. Uh, build up a plan for me to actually answer my own questions and gain the courage to. Um, act for them you know yeah so uh with, with that said I, I think you know we all need that someone we all need positivity we need to surround ourselves with positivity um and if we can't find it around us then we must go out in nature 
um, manifest some thoughts out there that are positive and just, um, you know, just believe that, you know, as time changes, you know, this will pass and things will change for you. And, you know, with, with rain comes sunshine, with sun comes rain. I mean, it's all a pattern of life. You know, everything is hand in glove. Everything goes comes together. Well, that's that's why I vi vie a lot for um, uh, mental health counseling um, therapists and and any of the above. Uh, I'm I'm fortunate enough to have a resource like that provided for me for uh, as a military veteran to be able to have, um, especially something that I can just call and, and you know be a part of immediately. Uh, but it's something that I that I definitely tell my friends who are going through hard times. Well, like, hey, when's the last time you went to go see a therapist who could help you out with um, not necessarily telling you what to do or telling you why you're doing the things you're doing, but to help you answer your own questions about why you're doing stuff and yeah. to get the courage to be able to make the necessary steps to do the next best thing for you. Yeah. Because yeah. that's what it's all about. Uh, it's It's not about necessarily talking with somebody else for them to tell you what to do. It's mm -hmm. talking to somebody else for them to shed light on the questions or the answers you already have for your own questions. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Like, and what do we do when we go to the counselor anyway? The counselor is always asking us questions, right? They're always going, so what do you think, you, you know, what do you feel about this? And what do you, it's, so it's like all the answers are within us, mm -hmm. but it, it's just, we need a bouncing board sometimes. We need a counselor sometimes just to take those questions out of us so we can answer them ourselves and that's a good point you can bring up um and so it's okay right it's okay not to be okay and that's what we're going to say in this pandemic oops i lost you again there you there i'm there but i don't see your video so i'm gonna wait oh okay there we go <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, you, you you hit the nail on the head. It's okay to not be okay. Yeah. Um, it's okay to take your time, and it's okay to reach out to somebody. Um, if you don't feel comfortable with reaching out to people that you know, um, reaching out to somebody you don't know, uh, taking taking chances is part of it, and a big chance of it is reaching out to, you know, hey friend who i either think i has some stuff that going on that has a therapist do you recommend an office that i can visit or call into and see my how am i meet and talk with somebody about something um, i mean to think about just 20 15 20 years ago the resources that weren't available for mental health and counseling in general um, has was pretty disturbing now the resources that are out there is no, it's amazing. It's amazing the number of the, the people that have been able to um, care enough, study enough, be able to open up the dialogue enough. Oh, um, yeah, and with social media, it's everywhere. There's like man. mental health matters, mental health this, and there's, you know, there, it's state-wise, it's country-wise. It's like there's awareness everywhere. All you need to do is reach out, right? Mm -hmm. You just need to make that effort to reach out and know that you're not alone. And no one ever goes through... Um, what you're going through, but someone has been through something similar to what you've been through. So, um, you know, we have to just go on from that. We have to, we have to move on. But what, what would you take back from, you know, this experience that you had um, with with your friends? What do you take back? What's your take takeaway from that? Uh, from the from, from the suicides. Um. Wow, that's a that's a the big long question. <laughs> What's my takeaway from all of that? Um, I cherish the time that you do have with the friends that you have. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I I was in the unfortunate place of not being there for those friends at that time to be able to read science or be able to like talk with people about that. I would like to think that maybe I would give them the opportunity of talking about these things. But I will never know because I wasn't there. How can I make that happen? So my biggest takeaway was being able to create and then remember the good parts about what we've been able to do and how that influences and inspires what I do here now. You know, a, a big part of the reason why I make music in the first place is there's this common thread, I think, within our group that we weren't able to kind of outwardly communicate how and why we felt the things that we did. Uh, 
and one of the modalities I was able to utilize to be able to com communicate without necessarily words was with music and to be able to um, put something so ineffable or incommunicable with myself towards others out there in music, it was almost like I was able to disguise that inner dialogue and be able to speak with other people and find a common ground with everybody else who invariably has something similar going on in their own heads too. Um, it, you know, there, there's there's a place, there's a place where people can gather and-, and uh, um, your, um, your, the, the musical side of you, did that get enhanced after, after these events? Did, did, that, did, that, did that happen? Uh, I don't. I, I don't know for sure, but I knew it helped give me a focus on on where to kind of go deeper. Yeah. You know, well, um, able to um, as an artist to to have that outlet. You know, to that we could express ourselves with, like you know, I could do through stories. You could do it through music, and that's what the arts do. And I really do believe in the power of the arts. And there's really no other medium that really lets you express yourself as much as the arts. And you know, I always tell everyone, make sure your kids are taking at least one drama class in their life, you know, because it really just takes out so much of that pent up garbage um, that you might have. Um, and it's so important to let it out. It, and I think you can only do that in a, in a drama class. So um, me being a drama, an ex-drama student myself, I, I think that was life changing for me, just taking that um, class. And I just didn't leave it. It was over in four months, but I, I stayed on for about six months because it's just it was so cathartic, you know, it was so therapeutic. It was just um, like, I didn't have to go to a counselor, you know, um, all of the um, the expressing and the improv and all just kind of took it all out, you know, um, just performing it out, you know, and you do it through music and it's just wonderful. And I could see it in the song that, we, uh, that you've created for this movie. And it's just so soulful, so amazing and so another level, it totally defines this movie for me, and you know that. You know how much I love you. I love the song so much. Um, and you know, I just released it, and I'm getting a lot of people to love your music. And you know, I wish you well on this musical journey, Scott. You're an amazing talent. You're an amazing person. Thank you for sharing today. Um, is there anything you'd like to say? A message that you'd like to give out? Uh, yeah, I'll I'll one hundred percent always vie for uh, mental health and mental health counseling. Uh, um, I said this last time in our last interview too. I gave out my phone number. Um, I'm I'm not going to do that this time, but I will say, hey, there are a thousand and one resources for you able to reach out and you know talk with somebody about something to be able to help you get past your own barriers and uh, and and find a find another place out there some place that's a lot more healthy and conducive for you to develop your own dreams. Yes. Yes, totally. Yes. And don't give up on yourself. Right. Cause you know, you don't love yourself. You can't love outside. So remember that. Um, and yes, you're not alone. You don't have to suffer alone. Thank you for doing this, Scott. Thank you for reliving those experiences with me today. Mm -hmm. And thank you for your music. And I hope we make some more brilliant music ahead. Hey, this this release is something uh, important, and I'm very, very excited to be a part of it. Uh, I really appreciate the platform and the modality of being able to do this back and forth with you. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited about seeing the movie. <laughs> yeah, me too. Waiting, <laughs> waiting for it to get over. You know, it's it's an edit now, and it's just like, oh, you know. But that's where movies are made, right? And it's that's where the magic is done. And um, yeah, I mean. Thank you for doing this stuff, and we'll see you soon. Sounds good, Venetia. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.